The 2011 Marcus Mosiah Garvey Community Service Award presented by Roots Foundation to our special guest speaker this evening. He's like a professional speaker. You'll see for yourself. Dr. Umar Abdullah Johnson, who is the touted great, great, great grandnephew of Frederick Douglass, who we've been talking about. And this award is to Umar for his exceptional and exemplary contribution to the international Pan-African community. Here he comes. Um, if you go online when you go home, there's a new DVD out recently called Hidden Colors with a whole host of name brand black academics. Well, Brother Umar, a young up-and-coming academic and activist, is part of them too. So if you haven't heard about him before, you will after tonight. I'm sure you won't forget, forget about him after tonight. Brother Umar. Garvey came to be with us this evening at no expense to us other than us flying flying him in and putting him up and feeding him so and it's the, a community and, effort and he's priceless so we couldn't even afford to pay him. you're about to find out right now come on please You talk about dynamite in flesh, well, you're about to behold it. This past March, for the first time, I had the opportunity to go to Jamaica and finally pay respect to the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey in person. And thanks to Priest Dougie, who was by my side those entire seven days, I got a chance to travel the island, a good deal of it, went up to Moortown, paid respect to Queen Mother Nanny. And we went to Little Nanny Falls, and I even took off my clothes and got in the water. And I really enjoyed myself while I was there. Got a chance to speak at the University of the West Indies. Professor Barnett, Muta Baruka, Taris Riley. That was very, very powerful for me. Had an opportunity to speak twice at Holly Selassie High School. But while I was at the grave of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, and Dougie was by my side, Priest Dougie, and I asked the ancestor, what, if anything, could I do to try to fix or reverse the problems that we have as a race. And the ancestor whispered into my spirit to go back home and remind your brothers and sisters in America just exactly what I stood for. He said, tell them that whenever they call themselves Garveyites or whenever they wave the red, black, and green, whatever they utter my name, but don't live my principles then not only are they disrespecting me, but they're making a mockery of my movement. And so tonight, I came to reiterate just exactly 
what Garveyism is. I think Dr. Julius Garvey already done it, but I'm going to try to reinforce it a little bit. The first plank of Garveyism is unity, African unity, locally and internationally. And when we talk about unity, we're talking about putting away those petty differences that the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey said that we were cursed with. Some of us always find fault with another African for some ridiculous reason. We think that we're justified in disliking our brother and our sister because we're not conscious of the fact that that disagreement is really based on self-hatred and has nothing to do with the circumstances of the division. So unity is what we need. We need light-skinned Africans to unite with dark-skinned Africans. We need Muslims to unite with Christians. We need Hebrews to unite with Moors. We need Rastas to unite with Jehovah Witnesses. Whatever the religion is, whatever the ideology is, we need unity because Mr. Garvey said that the race must be first, yes. not the fraternity, not the sorority, not the lodge, not the neighborhood, not the degree, but the race. We've lost that. And today we put everything else before we put our race. Secondly, Mr. Garvey said that we must be proud of being Africans, not just knowledgeable. Because I know a lot of black people who are knowledgeable about their African history, but they're not proud of it. When you're proud of your African history, that's when there's an electric force that grabs the spirit and the heart and unites them in unity behind that history. So knowledge and pride is two different things because there's a lot of white people who know your history too. So just to know it means nothing. There's a lot of white Egyptologists and white African historians and white Caribbean historians, but only those who live it can truly be proud of it. Mr. Garvey said that we must identify with being African before we identify with being anything else. Sankofa, Sankofa, Sankofa. We lost Queen and Zinka, we lost Yaa Santiwa, we lost Nani, we lost mothers, sisters, and son. we lost mothers, sisters, and daughters, we lost, we lost, we lost Marcus Garvey, we lost Emotep, we lost Shaka Zulu, we lost fathers, brothers, and sons, we lost, we lost, we lost so much that we don't even know, we lost our flow, we lost our love, we lost things undreamed of, we lost the sight to see the necessity to Sankofa. Sankofa, Sankofa, Sankofa. We lost our religion, our culture, our way. We lost the ability to readily connect with our DNA. We lost the essence that linked male and female. We lost so many critical details. Can you hear Mama Africa calling for you to Sankofa? Sankofa, Sankofa, Sankofa. Can you hear Mama Africa? Sankofa, 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 Sankofa. How many babies do we have to kill? How low do our numbers need to reduce before we sankofa? Running away from our nature, praying to the oppressor's fictional creator when we are the original image of God. Will you continue to say yes, master, and nod rather than to sankofa, sankofa, sankofa. Sankofa. Go back and fetch the foods that fed your soul. Sankofa, go back and fetch your names. I know you have problems with the European mole. Sankofa, go back and fetch and you will see. Sankofa, go back and fetch and you will see. Sankofa, go back and fetch and you will see our divine beauty. The fact that we are still here is a testimony to how much we are blessed. We lost. We lost. We lost. But this doesn't have to be the way the story ends. Just let go and sankofa. 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 
Unfortunately, we have allowed the American social order to play a names game with us. Musical chairs with what we call ourselves. And so today, we're Cablin Asian and half Caucasian. <laughs> we're part this and part that. The average Negro has studied his family tree, not to know who he is, but to find that little drop of Irish blood, to find that little drop of Italian blood, to find that little drop of Native American blood, to find that little drop of German blood. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever found an East Indian or an Arab? A European or a Native American who bragged about being African? But why do we find so many Africans bragging to be a part of another race? It's because you absolutely, consequently, hate your damn self. My great, great, great grandmother was raped by the slave master who owned our family, who was an Irish man. I never once claimed that blood because what is one drop of the Irish compared to 99% of the African? <laughs> Mr. Garvey said that however you worship, if you're going to give God an image, that image must look like you. Now we know supreme consciousness doesn't have a physical form, but it can take that physical form, and it takes that physical form in the form of every black woman and child on the face of this earth each and every day you wake up. They say God don't have color. God can't take physical form. I question that. After all, isn't dark energy the essential force of the universe? Isn't carbon present in almost everything in existence? Doesn't dark matter occupy about 99% of all existence? It's not your pineal gland black. It's not every spiritual stone known to the mineral kingdom in the shade of ebony. So, if all things spiritual are African, and if the universe that birthed all things is black, and if the womb that gave life to everybody sitting here is black, I think in some way, shape, or form, God must be black. <laughs> what separates Garveyism from every other kind of nationalism is that we believe in repatriation. Yes. I want to be crystal clear that pan-African nationalism, that Garveyism is not black nationalism. There's a difference there. The black nationalist does not want to leave America. The Garveyite wants to go home. The black nationalist wants to create a Negro colony where he can practice his own form of capitalism. The Garveyite wants to go home and create a new social order for the 21st century African. When we say we Garveyites, we say that we understand where we come from. We don't come from North America. We are not Asiatics. And we also don't come from the moon, Jupiter, Mars, the center of the earth, or all these other crazy ass places we keep finding life. Because black people don't want to be black no more. And because of that, we're willing to take on every identity in existence, including that of alien cultures. I heard a Negro tell me the other day that he came from a planet I never heard of a day in my life. <laughs> Mr. Garvey said that our nationhood must be centered on the continent of Africa. He said that why? Because it makes no sense for you, God's first people, the original man and woman of the earth, to want to give up an entire continent for a country. It makes no sense to me. When Mr. Garvey was asked whether he was Jamaican or an African, he said, I would never give up a country, excuse me, I would never give up a continent for an island. Yeah. We have to stop focusing on this, where the slave ship dropped us off at and focus on where the slave ship picked us up at. You might be Jamaican, but you're Jamaican African. You might be a Pennsylvania, but you're Pennsylvania African. You might be in Sudan, you're Sudanese African. You have a numerator and a denominator in every mathematic equation. The numerator is nothing unless it stands on the denominator. So after the night, let us all stand on that great denominator of Africa. Calling us oh 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 mama Africa calling us oh 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 mama Africa I could see this land in a vision up to me to make my decision can't take it no more in baby run too much confusion too much frustration I want to sit up with the elders sing sweet songs with the daughters 
Be the Naya Bingi Jum Babylon run. Be the Naya Congo Jum calling us oh oh oh. Oh Mama Africa calling us oh oh oh. Mama Africa. Yeah, that's like a small piece. Eh? Which is the proper name? Some Negroes running around saying that was Leo Africano. So I'm sorry, that name was in existence before him. Some Negroes are saying that the Greeks gave it to us. Not at all. The word Africa is indigenous to Africa and it means birth of man. And if you break down the three phonemes in the word, af, from, ra, god, ka, soul, we're all from God's soul. <laughs> Mr. Garvey said that we must have independent political power. One of the reasons why the federal branch of the United States government really hasn't done anything for black people. One of the reasons why the president hasn't done anything for black people is because we did not organize our votes before we cast them. The reason why you don't get what you need in Fort Lauderdale. The reason why we don't get what we need in Philadelphia. The reason why we don't get what we need in Jamaica or Brazil or anywhere on the face of this earth is because we keep on voting as individuals and we do not use a block vote. We don't need a black president. We don't need a black governor. We don't need a black mayor. What we need is organized blocks of black votes to influence the governor, whatever color, influence the president, whatever color, and influence the mayor of every color. Stop confusing the means with the goal. Mr. Garvey said we gotta have independent economic power, that the race can only be saved through a solid industrial effort. Look at us, black people. Look at us. At the end of slavery, when the 13th Amendment was passed in this country in 1865, black people own one half of 1% of all the wealth in this country. That was 143 years ago. Here we are today in 2011 and we still only own one half of 1% of all the wealth in this country. You say you free? Then show me how you free. Free people have free institutions that they control. Where's your supermarket? Where's your airline? Where's your distribution network? Where's your shipping company? Where's your factory? Where's your distribution network? Where's your gas stations? Where your hospitals? You don't have them. And please stop bringing, blaming Dr. Martin Luther King for integration. Dr. King was already dead and gone by the time that law took effect. The reason why you don't have no institutions is because you've been having a love affair with Europeans and the minute they said that you can give up your institution and come work in theirs, we left the independent black school. We left the black hospitals. It was our love for our slave master that we still have to this very day that led to the demise of black institutions. Let me get something crystal clear here and now. You cannot love God and be afraid of white people at the same time. I said you cannot love God and be afraid of white people at the same time because whatever you fear is your God. Hey. Yes. Yes. Woo. Woo. Mr. Garvey said, if it is to be done, it must be done by African hands. We have to do it. Let's stop begging the school district to teach black children African history. I don't want no Irish or Italian or Jew teaching my black daughter who she is. That's the job for me and for her community. It's no victory whenever you get the European to pick up an ounce of your responsibility. It simply means that you're walking one step closer back into slavery. I remember, I, 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 I remember the void, 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 when I lost, when I lost, when I lost, when I lost, 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 my child, lost, 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 my husband, lost my father, lost my brother, lost my sister, lost my brother, lost, lost myself, I, 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 I remember the void, the void, the void, the void, the tears, the tears, the tears, the tears, the tears, that came with the void, the tears, the tears, the tears that came with the void. I remember the the, 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 the betrayal, the betrayal, the betrayal by those who looked like me, like me, like me, those who did not want me to be free. It was so hard to swallow, too, so hard to swallow, swallow, swallowing, swallowing. I remember swallowing water. I remember swallowing water when I remember swallowing water when I, I remember swallowing water and I jumped. I remember when I jumped. I remember leaving the stench of death, leaving the stench of death. I remember embracing death. I remember the screams, ah, the screams, the screams, the screams. I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. 
I, 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 I remember running, 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 running to the beat of drum, running, 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 running to the beat of drum. It was a signal for us to revolt. I remember running, running, running to the beat of drum. It was a signal for us to revolt. I remember fighting to the beat of drum. I remember fighting to the beat of drum. Coupe tête boule kai, coupe tête boule kai. Freedom or death, free or die. I remember the betrayal, the betrayal, the betrayal by those who looked like me, like me, like me. Those who did not want me to be free. I remember the rope, the rope, the rope, the rope they tied around our necks, the pain from the branding on our chest. I remember, I remember ah, the screams, the screams, ah, the screams. I remember, I remember, I remember the scenes, I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. <laughs> I remember, I remember Massa, I remember Massa, I remember Massa whipping, 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 whipping. I remember Massa whipping, I remember Massa ripping, I remember Massa ripping my clothes, I remember Massa ripping, I remember, ah, the screens, the screens, I remember Massa ripping, I remember Massa ripping open my womb as I hung from the tree, he killed my unborn baby as I hung from the tree. I I, I the screams, the screams from birthing babies born from Massa's blood. I, I remember longing for home, longing to see my mother's face. I remember longing to be in my husband's arms. I remember the endless tears, the rivers I cried, the oceans I filled with the waters from my eyes. I remember it's so hard to remember. It's so heavy, the pain, the pain, the hurt, the loss. It's so heavy. I, I I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. I, 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 I remember freedom, free, dumb. Dumb was I to think that I was free. How dumb was I to think that I was free? I remember the illusions of being free. I remember strange fruit hanging from a tree. I remember white sheets, ghosts in the night that kidnap, burn, cursed, castrated in skin, kidnap, burn, castrated in skin, kidnap, burn, castrated in skin, ghosts in the night that kidnap, burn, castrated in skin, and hung us from that tree. I remember the pointing, the smiles, the sea of white faces. I remember the spit, the hoses, the beating. I remember, I remember ah, the screams. I remember the screams. I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. I remember the bars, the bullets. One, two, three, four, fifth bullets ripping into his flesh, her flesh, our flesh. I remember the endless funerals. I remember the endless tears, the rivers we filled with the waters from our eyes. I, re I remember the screams, the screams. I remember, I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. I remember the boat, the betrayal, the void, the smell, the cries, the drownings, running to the beat of the drum, fighting to the beat of the drum, running to the beat of the drum, fighting to the beat of the drum, the rape of our men and women, the lynchings, the burnings, the pointings, the smiles, the sea of white faces. I remember the spit, the hoses, the beating. I remember running to the beat of the drum, fighting to the beat of the drum, running to the beat of the drum, fighting to the beat of the drum, the bars, the bullets, the funerals, the cries, the tears, the screams. I remember death. I remember dying to come back again and again and again and again. It's so hard to remember. It's so heavy. The pain, the pain, the hurt. It's so heavy to remember. I remember, I remember, I remember the scenes lost to amnesia. Warning, system overload. Mr. Garvey believed in uncompromising determination and courage. Black men, we got to start being bold. We don't have to be silly and arrogant, but we got to be bold as Mr. Garvey was. We have to be willing to stand up and speak truth to power. And one of the biggest reasons why we can't take back our streets is because black men are afraid of their own sons. Black men are afraid of their own nephews. Black men are saying afraid of their own cousins. And so we got the sisters out front stepping to these thugs and we should be stepping to them. That's the problem right now. I said earlier, every black community need to have a ski mask club. A ski mask club of brothers who ride around at night 
and look for other brothers who ain't doing the right thing and you throw them in the back of the truck and you know what happens after that. If you start a ski mask club, crime will drop overnight. That's the problem, black man. We're waiting for the police. And we keep on asking the police to come in and help, and they end up shooting all the wrong people and locking up all the wrong people. You can't expect a European to help you fix your racial reality. That's your God-given responsibility. And we have to stop waiting for the creator to come down from heaven to give us a helping hand. Because for those of you who are Christian, you know that the Bible said that what? Worship without works is dead. And if you're Muslim, you know that it says God only helps those who helps themselves. And whatever holy book you got, is something in it that lets you know that God doesn't get up until you get down. Yeah. 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 Mr. Garvey said we got to have a healthy respect for black womanhood and a healthy respect for black manhood. Black man, it is absolutely disrespectful and unforgivable for you to take the hand of any other man's daughter in marriage except a woman who looks like your mother. If you don't marry an African and you don't like your own mother, your mother in the relationship you had with her is symbolic of the relationship you have with every woman with the rest of, for the rest of your life. As I said last night, we keep talking about love is blind. How is love blind when 95% of all black men married to white women are married to humble white women and the black men always have property, position, power, or finances? If it's all about love, as I said last night, why can't we find one rich white woman married to a broke black brother? <laughs> if you know of one, please show me. Stop making excuses. It's just a sexual thing. Stop making excuses. I'm paying them back for what they did to my ancestors. You ain't paying nobody back. Even in the bedroom, the white woman still has more power than you got. Stop playing with yourself. Black woman, please don't fall for the hype that you got to start going outside your race to find a suitable mate. That ain't nothing but a trap. You fail to realize that although the black man is in love with the white woman, the white man is not in love with the black woman except as a tool of sexual exploitation. If you don't believe me, I once had a sister confess to me that she was engaged to a European. And at the last minute, right before they got married, he called her a black bee. I knew another sister who was engaged to a European and just before they got married, he confessed to her that he was only lying to her to make sure he can keep her as a sexual concubine. Mm. Yes, yes, you think that racism stops in the bedroom. You think that just because somebody loves you, that means they see you as an equal. Last time I checked, you love your cat, you love your dog, you love your fish, I love my python, but damn, they're not equal to me. <laughs> Mr. Garvey said, that we, have, we must have self-rule and self-government. He said, God did not intend for us to be a race without a nation, and we are not going to abuse God's confidence in us as men. That means we got to take back Africa. What do you mean you don't want Africa? When I'm on the airplane flying to Nigeria, when I'm on the airplane flying to Ethiopia, when I'm on the airplane flying to Malawi, South Africa, half the airplane is East Indian, half the airplane is Korean, half the airplane is Chinese, half the airplane is European. You don't think they catch malaria? You don't think they get yellow fever? You don't think they tired of the sunshine? But damn if they ain't still there. So if the white man could come and take back my mama's land, you could be damn sure I'm gonna go back and take my mama's land. <laughs> Last but not least, Mr. Garvey said that our confidence, our faith is confidence in ourselves. Stop looking for confidence in everything outside of you, black man and black woman. Stop looking for confidence in other people. Stop looking in confidence in other religions. Stop looking for confidence in the governments of other lands. What you seek is inside you. And if what you got inside you, if you pull it out, it'll change your reality. But if you keep it buried, it'll kill every last one of us. Yeah. You heard what Dr. Garvey said it. Mr. Garvey, his father said that if we could get to know ourselves, we'll have a new reality in 24 hours. So what we waiting for? You think you won because the president is black? Are you not aware that they're preparing now more than ever to bury the whole race? Yes. While you play video games, bury the whole race. While you're listening to music, bury the whole race. While your son is on iPod and Xbox. We can't get along like this. We got to get that confidence back up. Stop making excuses and get up and build. We got to stop taking these handouts from the United States government. They not helping us. We got to stop taking handouts from the state government. That ain't helping us. 
Have you ever seen anything more beautiful than a child who's learning how to ride a bike for the first time? Fall and get up and fall and get up and fall and get up and then one time he gets up on that bike and he never falls again. Have you ever seen the pride in his eyes? That's the same pride you're gonna see in the eyes of every African on earth the minute we decide to kick away the crutches of white philanthropy and do it our damn self. Defender of the faith. Who? Defender of the faith. Come rescue your beloved dove from the fangs of the wild bees. Protect the apple of your eyes from the sight of the snipers. Cause if our blood should fall to the ground, who will sing sweet songs of praises, praises? Will the wicked man keep flutes out of our bow hounds? Uttering curses out of their foul mouth. Them shouting, shall the Eden continue to reign and capitalize? They remove the lion from the heights, gold and green. Tell me who, defender of the faith, who defend Africa, who defend peace and love, who 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 who? Tell me who, who 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 who? Went a whoring, bowing to Antichrist, that's confusion. What a vibes, living under the eagle and the bear here. I don't swear, Rasta man no say Babylon no care. Ethiopia, stretch for her hands now, oh yes. Come rescue your beloved dove from the fangs of the wild bees. Protect the apple of your eyes from the sight of the snipers. Come quick before the elect stretch them hands to iniquity. Join in the ranks of Lucifer and impassive. Cause a hungry family. In need of a salary, yeah. Come quick before bridging becomes enemy, enemy. Tell me you, defender of the faith. <laughs> Rastafari. Yeah. Oh, it can be done. People do it all the time. And they do it with Garveyism. Are you not aware that Hitler took Garveyism, put racism on top in, in United Germany? Are you not aware that Ho Chi Minh used to sneak into the meetings of Garvey, copied the program, took it back and liberated Vietnam? Are you not aware that those who brought liberation to Afghanistan once had a red, black, and green flag? Are you not aware that Mussolini copied Garvey, put Italian racism on it, and united Italy? Look at all the people who took Garveyism and used it for their own benefit, and we sitting here acting like we can't do it when we got all these copycats trying to take the program of our master while we act like we can't see it. As I close, black parents do me a favor. Stop allowing these schools to put your children in special education. Do me a favor. Stop allowing these school districts to tell you your son is learning disabled and emotionally disturbed and mentally retarded and autistic and ADHD and conduct disorder and disruptive behavior disorder. They using labels now to miseducate and incarcerate our young black boys and our girls while we sit by and do nothing about it. I don't care how much education that teacher has. I don't care how much education that principal has. I don't care how much education a school counselor has. That's your baby. He grew in your womb and he's gonna be with you for the rest of your life. So please, 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 in the name of our ancestors, start being parents and stop letting the school dictate to you. I'm a school psychologist. My job is to decide who goes into special ed, how long they stay there and when they come out. My job is to decide who's mentally gifted and who's not. My job is to decide who has ADHD and who does not. And for the life of me, please recognize something, that ADHD and conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder was created by the Wall Street drug companies to get rich off black boys who haven't been taught how to sit still long enough to be miseducated. This is the reality. Special education was created as a new form of segregation to take black kids that white schools didn't want and segregate them, but you couldn't do it in the name of color, so they do it in the name of disability. And every time I put one of your children in special education, that school gets approximately $10,000 extra each and every year they stay in special ed. Special education ain't no program, it's a multi-million dollar business. That's right. So stop trusting these schools with the education of your children. We have to evolve a new educational program that's based on Garveyism. 
And we must not equivocate on that Garveyism. And we got to be crystal clear that although we are nationalists and although we are Pan-Africanists, we are not Pan-African integrationists. We are not Pan-African religiousness. We are not Pan-African socialists. We are Pan-African nationalists of the Garveyite type. Stand on it and stand clear. That's what we do. But understand this, black people. Recognize one thing. That whenever the world wants to determine how much respect they're going to give to a group of people, they look at how well they treat their children and how they let other people treat their babies. And when you look at how we let these public schools treat our young people, I'm working in the schools. I see how they talk to our boys. The reason why we got so many black boys dropping out of school is because too many black boys are not willing to be psychologically castrated by a white middle class woman who doesn't live in his neighborhood and cares nothing about his success. Yeah. You're the one who keeps sending your son back to school. There's nothing wrong with him. The question is, what's wrong with you? Those brothers who are dropping out, hanging on the corners, do you know that those are the leaders of tomorrow? Those are the ones with the guts. Those are the ones with the courage. Those are the Garveyite tigers of tomorrow, but we got to nurture them. We cannot expect a black man with self-respect to go into an effeminized school system and come out the way we need them to be. In case you ain't been paying attention, there's a homosexual edict in the black community right now that started in 1972 when the Rockefeller World Population Council and Planned Parenthood came together and they said we need a new strategy to reduce the burgeoning black population rate. They said police brutality is effective, but it ain't working fast enough. They said mass incarceration is effective, but it ain't working fast enough. They said police brutality, drugs, black on black crime is effective, but it ain't working fast enough. They, need, they said we need something we can use to prevent the babies from coming into the world to begin with. And somebody came up with the bright idea, well, guess what? If we can convince black schoolgirls to only have sex with other black schoolgirls, and if we can convince black boys to only have sex with other black boys, we can cut the black population rate in half in 20 years. The homosexual movement has nothing to do with nature and nurture. It's about your extermination. Please understand that. In 1973, the American Psychiatric Association had a conference where they voted homosexuality out of the DSM-4, which is the book of mental disorders. That was in 73. In April of 74, the sixth printing of the DSM, homosexuality was no longer in there. Up until 1974, homosexuality was an illness in this society. They took it out so it could be done what? pushed on unsuspecting black school children and now California just last month passed the first mandatory homosexual history curriculum in public school so you don't want to build your independent African schools okay Gen genocide is one thing but gender side is something totally different I said genocide is one thing but genocide is something totally different and I know you in love with Obama and I'm not here to change your mind but I want you to be crystal clear that President Obama has appointed more homosexuals and lesbians to federal office than any president in U.S. history and more than George Bush and Bill Clinton put together in all 16. I want you to know that the Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan from Chicago, who fought for an all-homosexual high school in Chicago, is who your first black president put in charge of American education. I want you to know that Kevin Jennings, the man who went on record to say he wanted an all homosexual curriculum in every public and charter school was Obama's hand-picked director for safe and drug-free schools. So your black president has the domestic agenda of doing what? Confusing the sexual identity of black youth. So much so that our boys and girls of today are going to be the first generation who are going to have to choose whether they want to live as a woman or live as a man. As I wrap this up, as I wrap this up, for my women in the audience who are breastfeeding, please don't be breastfeeding your children no Similac or Isomil. Similac and Isomil ain't nothing but liquid crack for infants. They're made by the same companies that make the psychotropic drugs that they're giving our sons. No more Depakote after the day. No more Stratera, no more Zoloft, no more Cycler. We don't want it. No more Zeprexa. Our children don't need drugs. They need love. They need hugs. That's what they need. They need lap time. And please, let us stop buying into this nuclear family idea. The European has convinced you to believe that the family consists of a, a husband, a wife, a son and a daughter, four people, and that's the family. That is not the black family. The extended family has always been a black family. My grandmother is a part of my family. She's not extended. My grandfather is a part of my family. He's not extended. My aunties and my uncles are just as integral to my psychosocial development as are my parents. Yeah. 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 
six sciences that all African children need to be taught that they're not taught, currently being taught in the schools. Number one, we gotta teach them agricultural science. Number two, we gotta teach them political science. Number three, we gotta teach them the science of finance and economic competition. Number four, we gotta teach them the science of family so black girls know how to treat black boys and black boys know how to treat black girls. Number five, we gotta teach them spiritual science which Dr. Garvey so eloquently talked about today. And number six, we gotta teach them dietary science, how to eat, what to eat, when to eat, and most importantly, what not to eat as I leave. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey said that if the black man and woman are not careful, you will drink in all the poisons of Western civilization and die from the effects of it. Mr. Garvey said that without confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life, but with confidence, you have won even before you have started. Mr. Garvey said, don't you ever let another race make you think that self-rule is impossible for us. We are not infants, we are not toddlers, we are not children or teenagers. We are full grown men and women who have a right to possess Africa. In conclusion. <laughs> Queen Mother Harriet Tubman said, I freed hundreds of slaves, but I could have freed more. The problem was they didn't even know that they were slaves. Ida B. Wells said that I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Frederick Douglass said that if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Power can seize nothing without a demand. It never did and never will. People may not get all that they pay for, black man, but you must certainly pay for all that you get. Race is first. Hey,